In this video we'll look at how to use Excel to draw a cumulative frequency curve, also known as an ogive. Here is my frequency distribution, my group data. This was created from this raw data up here, of course. Now I first of all need to calculate cumulative frequency, so I'm going to add a column here for that. Now what is cumulative frequency? Well that tells you how many values in your data set are equal to or less than each upper class boundary. So for example you can see here that four values were 10 or less. If we add on these seven values that are greater than 10 and up to 20, that means altogether 11 values are 20 or less. Similarly adding on these three that means that 14 values are 30 or less and so on. So that's the cumulative frequency. We are gradually accumulating, adding up the frequencies. So to do that I'm going to use a formula. So first of all I need to put a formula in here. Now this first one of course is just equal to the actual frequency. So I'll put that equals what's in D8. Now to get the next one of course I have to add this next one onto the current total. So I need to put equals D9, which is where the 7 is, plus E8, which is where the current total is, which gives me 11, of course, 7 plus 4. And if I copy this formula down by dragging on the fill box here, it will do the rest. You can always tell that it's correct because the final one, of course, will be equal to the total frequency. OK, so that's the cumulative frequencies. As you can see, for example, out of the 25 values here, 23 of them were equal to 50 or less. Now, what I want, in fact, to plot is not the actual cumulative frequencies, but the percentage cumulative frequencies. So I'm going to add an additional column here for that. What are the percentage cumulative frequencies? Well, this tells me what percentage of the values are equal to or less than each upper class boundary. So for example, if we look here, we know that four values are 10 or less. But what percentage was that? Well, there are 25 altogether. So it's 4 out of 25, which is 16%. 16% of values are 10 or less. So I need to convert these numbers here into percentages, which means, of course, I need to divide each one by the total and times by 100. So let me do that. So I'm doing the first one here, 4 divided by 25, or using the cell references, of course. Now, before I enter, and I'll multiply by 100, of course, to get a percentage, but before I do that, I need to make a very important change. At the moment, this formula here is using relative cell references, which means if I, when I copy the formula down here, if I copy it as it stands, it will get adjusted. The E8 will become E9, the E13 will become E14 when I move down to here, and then E10 and E15 and so on, because the formula is using references relative to where it is. In other words, E8 here means this one, means the cell to the left. E13 means one to the left and one, two, three, four, five down. So when I copy this to here, it will adjust it accordingly. It will use 1 to the left, which of course is E9, and 1 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down, E14, which is why it will change it to E14. Now I do want the E8 to change to E9, E10, E11, E12, and so on, but I don't want the E13 to change. That needs to remain here so that it uses 25 on the bottom. So to do that, I need to make the E13 an absolute cell reference, one that doesn't change when I copy it. 
And to do that, you need to use dollar signs. You need to put dollar $E, dollar $13. The dollar sign in front of the E keeps the column at E. The dollar in front of the 13 keeps the row at 13. So it keeps the cell at E13. Now I could type those dollar signs in, but there is a keyboard shortcut in Excel, which is the F4 function key. So if I press that, as you can see, that puts me the dollar signs in as required. Now let's times by 100, make sure we get a percentage. And of course, as I said before, we get 16%. Now when I copy this down to the remaining cells, it works correctly. You can, you can tell you've done it correctly because the last one, of course, should be 100%, 25 as a percentage of 25. And if you check the formula, you'll see that it has it has changed the top to E13 as required, but it's kept the bottom at E, at dollar E, dollar 13, absolute. Okay, we're now almost in a position to draw the ogive. Now, a Kimsey frequency curve is an XY graph x, the, ver the uh, variable on the horizontal axis, is the upper class boundary, and y, the variable on the vertical axis, is the percentage cumulative frequency. So these are the two variables I need to plot against each other. Before I do that, I'd, I want to add the origin in. The uh, cumulative frequency curve should start from the origin, 0, 0. I don't have that here. So I need to add an additional row to put that in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on the row number, right click and choose insert, which puts a row above. So now I can put in zero here and zero here. That gives me my origin. That's the X value zero and that's the Y value zero. So let me now highlight these two variables. That's my x values. My y values are here. Now, of course, remember that if you want to highlight non-adjacent ranges in Excel, you need to hold down on the Mac here the Command key and on Windows the Control key. So holding down the Command key and dragging, I can highlight my other variable. Now, Excel assumes that your X variable, the one on the horizontal axis, is in the leftmost of the two columns and the Y variable is on the right. Now that's okay, as you can see here, X on the left, Y on the right. If they, you had a set of data where they were the other way around, you would have to rearrange them. So let's now plot the ogive. So I'll go to the insert menu. I want the scatter graph here, the XY graph. And I of course I want to join up the points with a nice smooth curve. So choosing that, I get my ogive. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. Let's move it over here. Again, I'll just make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so there is the ogive drawn. Now of course it just needs a little bit of editing as I showed in the last uh, video. You can easily edit any element of your chart by simply double clicking on the element you want to edit which will bring up an appropriate dialog box. Now the one, so obviously you can change the title to uh, something more appropriate. You can add axes labels if you wish. The one thing I want to illustrate here is how to change the scale of the axis. As you can see, the vertical axis here goes up to 120, but of course the highest value can only be 100. 100% is the highest cumulative percentage cumulative frequency. So it would look better, I think, if we reduce, change this axis so that 100 was the maximum value. So to do that, double click on one of the values of the on the axis. Let's bring up the dialog box that you want. Again, the there are various options here. The one I want is actually highlighted already. Bounds, the minimum value is not. That's okay. The maximum is currently 120. I want it to be 100. So simply change that to 100. And the thing is changed. And notice it's also changed the 
unit, the main unit from uh, I think it was 20 before now to 10, which is in fact much better. If you wanted to make that an even more detailed scale, so you wanted gaps of 5, say, rather than 10, of course you can just change it here, put 5 in. Now, so the other thing you might want to do is obviously is to change the title and add some axis labels and so on, but uh, I'll not put that here. Okay, so that shows you how to draw an ogive.